given functions q of x equals 1 over the square root of x and h of x equals x squared minus 9, we want to state the domain of each of the following functions using interval notation. And then they give us three separate functions. Okay. So for the first one, and I'll put it over here, the first one it looks like we're just dividing two functions, the q function and the h function. So q of, eight of x divided by h of x. Well, they told us that the q of x was 1 over the square root of x, and that's all being divided by the h function, h of x, which was x squared minus 9. Okay, I'm not going to simplify this, and you shouldn't simplify functions when you're trying to find a domain, because that's when things get a little hairy and you might leave out a couple of numbers. So always uh, do your domains from functions that you did not simplify. Now there's, for a domain, all you're looking for is basically exclusion values that would not make this function uh, be uh, finite, right? Have an actual value. So for domain, your exclusions, and I'm just going to put this over here, for now you should worry about two exclusion uh, theoretical principles. There are exclusion values whenever you have a square root of a number. And there are exclusion values whenever you have a value uh, x in the denominator. Let's work with the first one first. If you have a square root, any number under the square root, that number has to be greater than or equal to 0. However, when you're working with a denominator, the number, the x as a whole, can just not be equal to 0. It could be negative, it could be positive, it just cannot be equal to zero. So just know the difference here. Now, let's try to find the domain of the function that we just stated. It looks like we have two denominators. We have a little denominator here, and then the divided by the whole denominator here. So let's work with the first one. This is just a square root, but then it's in a denominator. So we got double whammy over here. The square root tells me that my x can be anything greater than or equal to 0. However, the denominator tells me that I can have any number just not equal to 0. So, unfortunately, I have to strip that equal part out of it. So as far as the first part of the function... I can only have x being greater than 0. Now let's go to the second part. This is in a denominator, so that means that this cannot equal to 0. Well, let's see the values that make it equal to 0. If I said x squared minus 9 equals 0, if I do the math, it would be x squared equals 9. You take the square root and you get two values, x equals a plus 3 and x equals a minus 3. Because remember, with square roots, you always will have two different options. So, um, that means that since this equals to 0, these numbers cannot be pa part of the domain. Now we just have to figure out which one does it make sense. If the whole thing has to be x greater than 0, look at this, this is a negative 3. That's less than 0. So will this number even be included? Absolutely not. I don't even have to think about this choice. But since this is a plus 3, and that's technically greater than 0, that's another exclusion. So you're working with two different exclusions here. x has to be greater than 0, and then I'm just going to put the other one over here. For this part, x cannot be equal to 3. Now I'm just going to put them together and make my domain. So the domain, well, since 0 is less than 3, I'm going to start at 0. And it can't be equal to 0, so I use parentheses. This could be 0 um, all the way up until 3. Now, since it cannot be equal to 3, I have to close the parentheses. And now let's keep going. I'm going to include the next set, so I have to start at 3. I exclude it because 
it wouldn't make any sense, but I can go all the way up until infinity. Let's close that out. And that would basically be your answer. So here is your domain for letter A. Okay, let's move on to B. B is now a composite function. I know it's a composite function because I know this notation. You should be familiar with what composite functions look like. Composite functions is just a fancy way of saying you're meshing, you're mixing the two functions together. And you always work from the inner function to the outer function, meaning parentheses. So for Q of H of X, the innermost function would be the H of X function. So that's the innermost because it's most inward with the parentheses. And the Q function is the outer function. Okay. So going by these steps, composite functions, you always plug in the input for the inner function first. The inner function here was H of X and H of X was just X squared minus nine. So then you take that new answer that you just solved for and you plug it in for the outer function. The outer function here is the Q function. And now instead of Q of X, it's Q of this whole thing, X squared minus nine, which means that any X that I have in my Q function, I have to make it what this is. So it was one over the square root of X, but now for all the X values, I just plug that in. So now it's going to be the square root of X squared minus nine. And now we just got to define the domain of this. Okay, well, now we only have one clear denominator. So I know that this whole thing cannot be equal to zero. So I'm just going to put that there. Zero is out of the question because that's just what denominators say. And now let's see, I have a square root. So double whammy again. So that means that I um, have to see what my values of X are going to be. So um, if we say X squared minus nine equals zero, that's gonna tell me the cutoff value for what should be under the square root. So let's see, it turns out to be X squared equals nine. This would be X equals a plus three and X equals a minus three, just like before. Now, let's see, um, both of these might work, but they might not work as well. Let, we just have to make sure that if we're going to include them or their exclusion values. So both of these are going to be exclusions because they will equal to zero, right? Um, and since it's in a denominator, we know that these cannot be it. However, it has to be greater than or equal to zero in general. Now let's just see if any numbers in here will work. So let's see, in between a negative three and a positive three, I might have a, I don't know, negative one. Now let's see, if I plug in X squared, minus nine, and if I plug in a negative one value for X, this would be one minus nine, uh-oh, and that's a negative value. That's not good. So which one do we not worry about? It looks like once again, we are not caring about the negative three, just like before. So you guys just have to kind of do a little bit of a check to see what makes sense. So here is my cutoff. I can only start at that three, because I need a positive value under here. So I'm ready to write my domain. Start at three, I have to exclude it because then that would make this whole thing zero and the denominator doesn't want to be equal to zero. But then I can continue on all the way to positive infinity. And that is your answer for the domain for B. Okay, so A and B are done. Let's now do C, I'll start C up top here. Another composite function, but just the opposite way. Your inner function now is Q, and your outer function is H. So one, well, what was Q of X? Q of X is one over the square root of X. 
I'm going to plug that in now for my outer function, which is the H function. That means that whenever I see an X value for my H, I just plug in this now. So H of X was X squared minus nine, but now I am plugging in one over the square root of X into that. Okay, now we just gotta find the domain. Let's see, ooh, this one is a little bit easier. I have a square root again, but now it's still a denominator, double whammy though. However, it's only X. So I know that for a square root of X, X can only be greater than or equal to zero. However, if it's in the denominator and it's in the denominator, the whole thing is in the denominator, X cannot be equal to zero. So what you're doing is you're just basically combining these two ideas. Oh, X cannot be equal to zero. So yeah, so let's just combine the two. It turns out that, okay, I can have X being anything greater than zero, but can I include it now? No, I have to get rid of it. So I can plug in any value from, you know, one and above, if we're doing whole numbers, and this for, uh, function will be satisfied. So I'm gonna start at zero. However, do I include it or exclude it? I exclude it, it's a parenthesis, and I can go all the way up until positive infinity. And that is your domain for the third part. And that's a check. Yeah, we did it. All right, guys, what do you think? If you keep practicing math, you can definitely do this, all right? You just gotta, you know, keep motivated. Hopefully these videos help. I'll be here every step of the way with you guys in math, so I hope I make it fun and entertaining. Let me know down in the comments what you thought. If you have any questions, I would love to answer them for you, and I will see you guys all in the next lesson. We got this. Let's go.